Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. This is Tom from Where's the Buffet, and you're listening to the Otaku Generation podcast. Your mother is listening. Why aren't you? What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to thank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all make some noise. The king never gets old. It rocks me to my gut hole. They bring all the otaku to the yard. Otaku generation, they rock hard. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Welcome to show 787. And uh, I feel like we're going after. Boeing uh, uh, airplane model numbers now. <laughs> we, we still have better social distancing. So, hi, hello, everyone. I am Alan. I'm Bryce. And I am Paul. And that is taking a nap. What's Freesh? What's Bang? What's Squeak with the UG crew? Indeed. So, a uh, very short list of things that I did this weekend. I played some Satisfactory. Before I forget, we recorded an after show. I released that. Uh, John released the June Polymatic because of stuff and things and people being busy, uh, meaning John being busy. <laughs> we did record a Polymatic for July, so we're skipping that month. Um, but it wouldn't matter anyways if you wouldn't hear it until August, you know, given, given the, the, the sort of scheduling of his releases for these things. Um, but with that said, what else did I do? Uh, I finally did that big uh, Animal Crossing project. That I wanted to, and so now I'm into second day. Uh, I did it last night, so I'm to really the first day. So trees are growing back, and you know, I made things nicer. And uh, my island of Val went down, of course, because I removed lots of lots of trees. Um, but I planted a lot of trees. So, but I also went scuba diving in the uh, in the game. However, yep, that's the big news. I screwed it up because today I was selling stuff. And I didn't realize that I marked because I was after I was going to sell the stuff, I was going to go diving some more, you know, in the afternoon and end up selling my scuba suit. Yeah. You, can, you can buy another one from the. Cabinet. You can't right now. It has to randomly show up. Really? Uh huh. Yeah, because after I bought it, I <laughs> well, quit. you can always buy one from the. Uh, you get one tomorrow, guaranteed to be ch- going to Nook Shopping, like the phone app or the uh, terminal app. Oh, really? Yeah, they sell them on there too. Different patterns. You could probably I'm, every time I've checked, it's, there's one been there. So I would buy it today and go get it tomorrow. I maxed out all my because I was I was putting street lamps and floor lights in, so I bought all that stuff. But no, I couldn't find it. I looked for it. Uh, uh. It's with the tools in the uh, in the Ducklings shop. Right, that I understand. But it, it, after I bought it, it went missing. I noticed it didn't go back anymore. It's not in the uh, cabinet anymore. So uh-huh. I went looking at this, and they go, "Oh, if you if your game saved, you're screwed." Mm. And so it's basically you have to wait for it to randomly show back up. And yes, originally I I thought you could uh, exactly what you're saying, Bryce. You could buy different patterns in the um, in sort of the uh, the Nook 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 Mazan or whatever it was, um, but I didn't see it unless it's under some other name. That I don't like the special the special items like where you buy the, uh, the uh, song of the day. It's all yeah, I that. guess I'll have to wait till tomorrow. So anyhow, um, outside of that, uh, I mean that's fun. I really like doing that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, kind of busy with that. I literally played on Friday because I had a day off, uh, technically and literally, because <laughs> yeah. my last day was Friday, uh, and I'm starting a new job in a couple of weeks. But with that, I wasted, I basically got up and I spent hours. So that was it. That's kind of what I did on my my Friday, my Saturday, um, and then um, just a little bit of today. I screwed up and sold my scuba scoop. Anyhow, so that was all what was hot and fresh with me. Oh, and I've been watching through Dark Matter. So that's been really good. 
Um, I like that show. It's a good show. Um, it's not as good as like Firefly or anything, but uh, but you know, as as a compromise of not having any new Stargate and no new Star Trek and uh, definitely no new Firefly. I'll, I'll take it for now. Um, but I'm going to be running out. So um, the only other one little note that I was watching uh, a particular episode, and, and you know, I mentioned this in, in the Discord, so this is more interesting for Simon. But on Netflix, there's a, uh, a show called Kim's Convenience. And so Simon told me about this show, and then it showed up on Netflix, I don't know, maybe months later. And it's a really fun show. It's just like a little sitcom. A family basically owns a, a Korean uh, convenience store in Toronto. And, uh, you know, all the things that happen around that. So um, it was just interesting. The mother and the father showed up in uh, a particular episode I was watching last night of Dark Matter. So I thought that was funny. I took a screenshot of it. And uh, it wasn't just like one of them. It was both of them. And they were doing an excellent, you know, no accent, you know, voice. So uh, that was it. So those are my highlights. Those are the things I did this weekend. What about you, Bryce? Anything more exciting than that? I've been reading some manga. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Manga mood continues. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start with Spy Family. Uh, Spy X Family. Spy Cross Family. I don't know how they pronounce it. But anyway, it's, it's the comedy series from... Um, it was on Jump that's been running. I guess it's on... I forget where it runs, but it runs bi-weekly. So every two weeks, there's a new uh, chapter. Um, last week, I think I said, like... So the whole premise is that this, it, this like, world-renowned spy named Twilight has to... Um, infiltrate a private school and i guess observe and get information on this like uh political leader who is trying to basically create a war between the east and the west you know it's it's very like it's not no real world (laughs) locations are used (laughs) and so to do that he needs to create a fake family he has to find a fake wife and a fake kid so he he ends up going to an orphanage, uh, adopting a um, telepathic kid. Who, you know, she can read people's minds, <laughs> and then also ends up uh, through circumstance. They end, she ends. He ends up finding another uh, woman who is a world-renowned assassin who also needs to have a fake husband. <laughs> so they don't know each other though. That's the whole thing, and it's all a big secret in, within the family about what each of them are. And it's pretty funny and honestly, like, more plot than I thought it would be. I thought this would be, like, sort of a gag manga, like, every week would be, like, a new joke at the end of the, you know. And it's like, that's it for the week. New new thing next week. But they actually have some, like, kind of um, continuing arcs, which I'm appreciating for sure. I really like the art. It's got a very good, like, clean anime look to it. Uh, I think this will make a really good anime. Uh, it's pretty popular, so I'm assuming it probably will eventually get an anime adaptation. Um, and the last uh, chapter, they ended up with a dog. That can see the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which the girl can read the dog's mind, so she can see the future now. And that's, I guess, where they're going with that. So um, I'm on chapter, I want to say chapter 20. I think there's like eight other chapters for me to read. Uh, it's on the it's on the Viz service. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun. The action's really good when, like, you know, the, it's really well drawn, like, the, when he, fighting actually happens. And, yeah, I mean, it's not the most serious of <laughs> um, uh, series, but. I think it does its job really well. Um, I, started re- I, I teased this last week. I started reading Boruto, Naruto's Next Generation, the manga, oh, yeah. because we, we watched that last anime movie, and I was like, oh, damn it. Now I need to watch some Boruto. I don't feel good about it. And I, I read it. I feel okay about it. Like, this is all right. <laughs> it's, just, you know, it's cool to see all my favorite characters, you know, grown up, and then we have the kids. Um, I... We don't, I only ever watched the first episode of the anime uh, during like uh, probably the season previews we did for that one. Um, and already they've diverted from what happens there a lot. I, I for reading, I'm reading about it. I feel they've added, they added a ton of stuff to the anime that's not in the manga. Hmm. Um, Cause yeah, the whole thing with, I, I don't remember anything's happening in the anime, the first chapter, but it's, it's basically about Boruto. He's Naruto's son. He is, mad because naruto is a terrible father like most shonen fathers actually um because he's always working <laughs> and always he's the hokage he's got a lot of shit to do i don't blame him <laughs> there's this great moment in the first chapter where like ford was like you better show up for my little sister's birthday naruto's daughter or i'll never forgive you and then so Borto comes home it's the day of the birthday he opens the door and there's naruto it's like, okay great he's here They're having a good time you know it's a party you know, between the, the four of them, Kalihanata, the mother, and then Naruto is carrying the cake, 
and just disappears, and the cake falls on the ground. And I'm like, oh, wait, that was a shadow clone. Mm. Way to go, Naruto. <laughs> and he biffed it up. But then Sasuke shows up, and Borta decides he wants Sasuke to train him. So I guess that's where they're going with that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's good. I think that um, it's weird, because like, the art style, like I like it. It'd be fine if it were based off another series but the fact that the spin-off of the original naruto the the art style feels a little off to me and a little off-putting because it's not the same author and artist i know he's advising on the series but someone different i forget who if it's related to his team who originally worked on naruto uh so that's a little off-putting but it's not bad this is one of those things where it's like i if i had read this first i'd probably be like there's nothing wrong with this at all but because i read naruto so much back in the day that it's a little off to me um but that shouldn't, like, you know, keep you from reading it. I think if you like Naruto, it's probably worth checking it out. If nothing else, see your favorite characters, you know, as adults and then their kids. <laughs> I do, you know, the kids are like, you know, sort of these mishmashes of the adults. You know, it's like, oh, that's that character with blonde hair, but the face of this other guy. And I thought about it, I was like, you know, actually, that's just, that's just genetics. <laughs> you know, it's to, two parents. They're going to make something that looks like they're like, looks like them mashed up just to the uh, level of detail of a Naruto character. Um, that's also on the jump service, so I've been sort of reading that. Um, okay, now this one's not on the jump service. This is on Crunchyroll's manga app. And before I go into the the series itself, I want to talk about the manga app on Crunchyroll. It's not very good. <laughs> I've been reading it, and I've had multiple times where it just throws like a page from like three pages prior in the middle of what I'm reading, and I can't. And like it totally disconnects me. I'm like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Like going from one panel to the next per the page and then i had to like the only way to fix it is if i back up to the like back of my menu to like the chapter list and restart the chapter then it shows the correct page and that's just a weird glitch and i don't know why it does that i'm reading on my tablet but yes yeah, it's, it's the official country roll manga app i don't know why it does that but ugh. we were yeah. kind of complaining about that in discord about country rolls apps I yeah think, right uh, out. <laughs> yeah app design is not their strength yeah this yeah. is a weird glitch and it, it's it doesn't happen so often that I'm going to not... I say it's like, don't bother reading anything on there, but ugh, ugh, it just throws me off. It, it, as somebody who likes to read comics, it's just the, the weird disconnect is just not yeah, good. Yeah, I, I wonder how their viewer works. I wonder if they're doing like a... Is it what you like swipe left or right and it sort of page flips yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they yeah, probably exactly. have uh, like a item list, a view item list panel where they putting images in that carousel and it's in a sequence. And so it's probably like, you know, you scroll a page and sometimes you go back out and you come back in and then it puts you to the top or puts you to the, or sometimes yeah. it keeps the position. So it's probably treating it like that. And that's probably how they designed it. So it's, it's probably causing you that headache because it's treating every, every item in the screen resolution as like one, one vertical or one, yeah. you know, long by width of the page or something. So I don't know. Probably I don't not know the what they're doing, thing. but it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, I wish like because Viz the the jump app will let you download up to 100 chapters locally for a week. Um, so you can read when there's not an even you don't have internet caching. Just keep reading. And I wish also wish Control did that, but maybe I'm asking too much. But I'm reading Ashidaka, the Iron Hero, which is this. New uh, manga, I have Kadansha, I think, licensed it over here. It's um, this world where most people are born with two, like, sort of Dr. Octopus iron arms out of their back. So everybody has four limbs, but our main hero is born with two pairs of these. And so he is hated by society. He's a spawn of the devil. <laughs> and okay. It sort of goes from there. It's, it's, it's a very weird premise, but I, I kind of like it. Um, so he's sort of living out in the scrapyard, uh, not in the, the big city, because, you know, he has to, you know, he can't go there. People, you know, hate him. <laughs> so him and his sort of his teacher, uh, I guess, uh, role character is also there as well. And one day this like horrible creature appears that has a hundred arms. It's like this giant centipede thing, which I guess is it's based off this. So I guess in the in the mythology of the world, there's these like the original, I guess, this is original like destroyer who had a hundred arms and tried to destroy the world. And then this God appeared and saved the world with also a hundred arms. And <laughs> that's how it all went down. And so this is probably this thing's resurrection. And after it this ram sacks the city, um, the heroes decide they're going to try to travel and find a way to destroy this thing. 
Um, and they come across another group of people with multiple arms, and they sort of, right now, they're sort of testing them to see if they are worthy of being in their group. <laughs> and kind of goes from there. I I really like the premise. I really like the world. I really like the idea of characters with multiple arms. My big problem is, is that the action is confusing on the page. Like, I'm having trouble understanding what's exactly happening at times. And I wonder if that'd be something that would maybe be solved if they did do an anime of this. Um, I don't know how popular this is. It's a monthly series. There's about six chapters on Crunchyroll right now for it. Um, I would say don't rush out to read it right now, but if it becomes an anime, I think it'd be really awesome. But once again, it, that has to happen. I don't know how popular it's going to be, but uh, it's not bad, though. I'll probably keep reading a few more chapters, but I might stop and just be like, you know, what? let me just see this when it's, you know, full color, full animation, if it ever gets there. Uh, other than that, that's it for manga. Um, Anime wise, uh, watching more girls last tour, I think it's very good. Um, it, it's it's just a good like sort of sit down, watch an episode, and you're done type of series. You know, it's <laughs> it's just you know these two really surprisingly mellow anime girls traveling through this like unknown apocalypse, uh, post apocalypse that happened where there's no life really left in this gigantic weird city that they don't even really understand the culture of it beforehand. And I guess kind of the fun part is that they're sort of discovering as they explore the city, like what this culture was really like. And I kind of find that to be kind of the, the most interesting part, but hmm. they just kind of have, a, but they break it up in like three parts per episode, usually like with a, a separate episode title. And there's this one episode that I really love in episode five, the very last part of the episode where they just like, they're taking cover from the rain and they're in the, they're, they're on this like big metal structure and there's drips happening everywhere because it's not, you know, a full cover. And they, um, are just sort of like they discovered like hey if we put things under these water drops they make different sounds and it becomes this really awesome like musical <laughs> like all these sounds of water hitting drop water drops hitting different objects and because it's like it then like sort of goes into like the end credits and i think it really worked well uh i really want to i will do this a topic um more you know can all be back together because it's anime it's uh, amazon prime so we're kind of focusing on country roll titles right now because that's what we have all access to uh but i check it out uh i'm pretty impressed by it it's not a binge worthy series like i wouldn't binge it but like every once a week i think it's very uh very satisfying that's that for me i mean I play more animal crossing we talked about it already but yeah so not a lot of anime the past couple of weeks here this uh sort of stuck at home time just hasn't uh been motivating me to to, to binge stuff and uh this not particularly exciting season has been helping <laughs> with that. Uh, though I have to say, uh, we do have more shows being released even yeah. as I am speaking right yeah. now. Yeah, definitely. Next week. Get ready, folks. That's right. <laughs> First part. Yeah, we're, 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 oh, we're oh so ready. Uh, but let's see. So what's been going on? Um, I guess what I was watching is a little bit of the original Batman the Animated Series. Hmm. Uh, which is uh, regarded as a classic. I'd seen occasional episodes, but I'd never really like sat down with the uh, DVDs to watch it. And uh, yeah, it actually is um, a very well put together show. Yeah. Um, the first season is definitely sort of Batman versus the mob sort of stories for the most part. It's not really heavy on the supervillains, so it really does feel like those early days of you know, of, of the Batman detective comics. There's a really good episode where I think, I don't know if you've gone to it, like where the, it's called the man who killed Batman. Did you get to that chapter yet? Or Not yet. No. yet? Okay. <laughs> I'll, I won't say, I won't spoil it. Cause it's a really good episode. It's one of my favorites. Um, oh, at Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con two years ago, I think I went, I'm Albert who I friend of the show, Albert uh, managed to get like, he got selected to be in the, to go to the panel where the creators of that show, mm. as well as the voice of Batman, uh, Kevin Conroy, I believe his name is, <laughs> um, was also there as well. And they described an episode that sounded really awesome and never made print. Cause I guess Fox was like, no, nah, you can't do this. But apparently like there was a whole episode planned out where like you would see the gun being built as it like over the course of the episode that would end up being the gun used to shoot Batman's parents. I thought that would be <laughs> really awesome if they actually aired that episode, but apparently too much guns in the shot. I guess because Fox said no, but yeah, they had a lot of good stories though, about like different things. Like Fox was like, no, you can't do that. Like it's like, you can't throw someone through a window or something, <laughs> but you can throw someone that's not through a window. It's stuff like that. Yeah, it's down the stairs, uh, through a door. Yeah. But not through, through a, door, a window, but not a window just, I guess that's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, but uh, there's some sort of uh, interesting uh, sort of structural things to some of the episodes. I mean, they're clearly trying some stuff even this early in the show. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, to watching some more of this. Uh, this has been on my list for ages to just uh, sit down with. An iconic opening, too, for sure. That oh, yes, absolutely. That song, you know. Uh, what else? On uh, the gaming front, aside from Animal Crossing, which we shall not discuss further, um, a lot of Borderlands 3. I, I've i definitely been pretty hard on Borderlands 3 on this show, and not without reason, I have to say. <laughs> uh, but over the past couple of weeks, my brother and I have been playing some more, and the game's starting to open up a little bit. Now, this is a game that really titers out its fun. I mean, they do not want you to have any fun for, like, the first 20 hours of the game. And, like, you got to wonder what they're thinking here. I mean, this is, you know, the fourth major game in this franchise at this point. Um, you know, but, but still, you have to make it to, like, level 24 before you can actually get your your fourth weapon slot. I mean, there's no point in that. Mm -hmm. And the the lower level weapons are underpowered, but they're also boringly underpowered. So not much by way of, um, you know, elemental effects or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do get your hands in a good weapon, it it makes a big difference. But for that, you're at the mercy of the of the random number generator. Yeah. Uh, uh, but both my brother and I have agreed that, like, the last couple of sessions we have have actually been, like, actively fun. We have, like, full loadouts of four weapons that have been following us for a few levels. Um, the combats are pretty well balanced. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, I, this is a hard game to recommend, um, like, on, on purely... You know, this is a great game grounds, but if you're like a Borderlands fan and it's been like, you know, five or six years since you've played some and you'd like some more and you're willing to sort of slog through a slow start to get to the fun, the fun's there eventually. I just feel like I slogged through some s slow starts already twice in Borderlands 1 and 2 <laughs> <laughs> to get to yeah. the fun. So it's like, uh, again, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is also the first one where I've really played co-op. I mean, I have yeah, previous Borderlands, I've always done solo. I've done a little bit of, um, you know, co-op with my brother sort of later on in those games, mm -hmm. uh, at, at which point, you know, I know it fairly well. Uh, but this is the first one where from right from the start, I'm going into it co-op. And actually, I would say that for like those first 15 levels, co-op actually makes the game worse. Oh. <laughs> uh, and, and that is because of the absolutely god awful story. I mean, this yeah. story just blows. Um, and uh, actually, so I was actually feeling. So my brother and I finished a session last week, and I was like, I want to play some more Borderlands Three, but I don't want to like jump, you know, way far ahead of our joint campaign. Mm -hmm. So I started another character, just like from level one. I uh, figured, you know, give another playstyle a try. Uh, leveled my way up. And uh, it turns out if you skip all the cutscenes for the main storyline, the game's actually pretty OK. And like right. some of the side missions, you know, the, the writing is not as god awful. Uh, so that, you know, cuts out about, you know, a, you know, about a half of the utterly turgid uh, monologues from these utterly inane villains. Um, but yeah, um, so can't can't recommend it terribly, but it's mm -hmm. it's okay. Uh, on, on your recommendation, oh, no, Bryce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on your recommendation, Bryce, I, I think I mentioned to this uh, this to you. I was uh, checking out Destiny Two, mm -hmm. and I've only played a little bit, and I'm just sort of uh, trying it out to see, uh, you know, if that would be another good co-op option. And the thing that was most striking to me is how smoothly this game played compared to Borderlands 3. I mean, Borderlands 3 is just like a choppy, laggy mess of a game. And Destiny 2 really is like butter. Mm, so, good. Uh, but the shooting feels really solid. So, so that's on the list. I'll be uh, diving into that one at some point after, you know, Borderlands starts to fall down in, in my uh, time allocation. Yeah, I think... It I want to say, like, if as much as you just like the Borderlands 3 story, like, I, the Destiny 2 story isn't good, but it's also not, like, offensively bad. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of yeah. like whatever. Like, you'll just be like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> That's yeah. an excuse to go shoot more people. It's not going to make you cringe, like, oh, God, why are you saying these stupid things? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah. So anything else? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the Steam Summer Stale. Probably still on at the time this show drops. That'll so be wrapping up shortly. I have, as um, is always the case, been unable to resist picking up a few more games. Uh, it, stretching out that backlog, which I think it, it needs another term than backlog at this point, since it's more of a, like a clogged drain at this point. <laughs> uh, so let's see. What was, what, uh, there's a handful of things I picked up, but um, one of the interesting ones is Monster Train. Okay. So it's sort of a, um, a Slay the Spire-like. Mm -hmm. So uh, more or less a, uh, a, a linear deck building roguelite game uh, where you are on a train to hell and you are the mm -hmm. demons and you've got you know adventurers and angels coming in trying to fight their way up to the train to stop the boiler <laughs> and it's pretty good so compared to slay the Sp slay the spire i mean slay the spire is great i think it's an excellently crafted game but the graphics are definitely not top shelf and uh, Monster Train has all the polish. I mean, this game just feels really solid. So I haven't uh, sunk a lot of time into it yet, but I think this one, if you sort of like that style, is totally worth checking out. It definitely scratches a lot of the same itch. Is early access like Slay Spire was when it first came out, or is it full uh, release? Is, actually, I don't recall. Okay, I think I, I think it's full release. I think uh, it it's is certainly, too. It's, it certainly uh, feels like a fully yeah. polished game. Um, it has all the finish on it. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Uh, I, I picked up Monster Sanctuary, uh, which which I actually don't recall a lot about. Um, <laughs> have not had a chance to fire it up yet, but it has some sort of uh, Pokemon like features to it, as I understand, okay. and maybe a bit of farming. Uh, let's see, what else? I picked up a couple of the Yakuza games, which oh, nice. yeah. have been on my list for ages. Once again, have never really uh, dived in. Cool. Have you played any of those, Bryce? Uh, I've dabbled. I've dabbled into like some of the. Um, I, I dabbled into Yakuza Three, I think, which is back on the PlayStation Three, but I haven't played since then. I know Yakuza Zero is supposed to be like a return to form. Like, yo, this is a very good Yakuza game. So, is that one of the ones you picked up, or? Uh, it was uh, like zero through two. Oh yeah, the Ka the Kawami. Yeah, those are the ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those are they re those are like I think I think one and two were PlayStation two games that they remade in the engine of the current Yakuza games, and they call them yeah. Kawami. Those are the re releases. So that's like yeah. So yeah, here's yeah, a great story like all the way through. So it's worth definitely <laughs> playing through. Okay, them. cool. Yeah, I don't have a lot of nostalgia for PS two era three D graphics, so I'm I'm happy yeah, to play yeah. through that <laughs> engine for sure. Uh, is there anything else to mention? Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned that I picked up Titanfall 2. I think it was just yeah. before the, the summer sale started. This is another yeah. shooter. It was a uh, surprise uh, release on PC. And I was happy to be surprised. This has been one that I wanted to check out for a while. Yeah. And I've actually uh, put a few hours into that campaign. And it plays beautifully as well. Just really good shooting. Uh, you know, you sort of, it's a first person shooter, but like about half the time you're in a mech, half the time you're yeah. running around. And I have to say the running around parts feel really good. I mean, they have this wall running thing uh, where you're just like angling off of surfaces and just moving fast. Feels great. Shooting feels decent. And uh, the, the mech also feels really different. So yeah. Um, that, that's a good one. I can definitely uh, recommend that. Yeah. They're not charging much for it right now. Even the Steam Store, even when not on sale, I don't think it was that expensive, wasn't it? It was like $10? I don't know if it was quite that low, but it was yeah. it was uh, cheap enough to be a no-brainer. It yeah. was like, a, you know, the we just released this. Here's a discount. And yeah. so I'm like, okay, you know, sold. It's a cool campaign, for sure. I mean, I love the multiplayer as well. Like, I played a ton of the multiplayer. But even if you just want to play the campaign, I think it's still worth whatever they're asking for, whatever the price is. So. Uh, speaking of, of uh, PlayStation ports, uh, one coming up soon that we finally have a release date for mm -hmm. is Horizon Zero Dawn. And I am, uh, I'm psyched for that. I am, I've wanted to play that. That's one of those games where I was thinking, you know, eventually I'll have to pick up a PS, uh, PS4 at some point before it gets too obsolete. And now that's, you know, another one to check off the list. 
I wonder if they're going to keep pushing for that stuff on like late PC releases of their old PS4 games. They'll keep going that path. Like, are we going to get a Bloodborne PC release or a God of War even? <laughs> oh man, that would be that would be great. I mean, I played a lot of the uh, early God and God of War games. Yeah. The new one's really good. Um, yeah, I've heard great things about it, but again, you know, no console, so. Mm -hmm. But I, I, picked you, I, was... I picked up Disco Elysium. On oh the sale yeah, yeah. So I've been I've heard such great things about it. I, I finally picked it up because I was gonna pick that up in another fighting game called Them's Fighting Hurts, which is like the fighting game where it started out as like a fan made My Little Pony fighting game, but mm. then. Hasbro was like, no, don't do that. And so I guess <laughs> the, one of the character designers of My Little Pony like came in and was like, okay, I'll design characters that are not copyright infringing for you. <laughs> they made it this nice. game. So I said, all right, sure, I'll pick it. It was 10 bucks on the Steam sale. I know some cool habits, so I might play with them. Uh, but that was sort of like, that put the price high enough that I get $5 off if I bought Disco Elysium as well. <laughs> so that's, <what laughs> I like. I think that's the whole game I want. So. But I haven't played it yet. I, I'm not, I don't know a ton about Disco Elysium, but I heard amazing things. So I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, likewise. On the uh, sort of adventure front, um, uh, Outer Wilds is the one that's yeah. in the queue for me that yeah. I'd like to get through. Though I did, um, when I was looking through Hidden Gems, there was one that caught my attention called Infra, uh, hmm. which is uh, sort of a, uh, a uh, abandoned infrastructure exploration adventure game. So first person, uh, no shooting, you're just running around with your camera documenting uh, sort of all the damage in these um, in these dams and other abandoned industrial sites. That's pretty um, cool. I mean, is there more to it? Or like, is there like a story that's going to unfold while you do it? Or is there... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently you can like kind of breeze through the game, but there's also like a lot of environmental storytelling. If you find the logs and apparently the threat level does escalate as you go on. And it turns out there's a conspiracy of some sort that you're uncovering. That's cool. Uh, but uh, the, the graphics look great. I mean, I think this game's a, a few years old at this point, but it looks really good. Uh, these sort of this peaceful sort of, you know, abandoned and forest environments are great to move through. Uh, you need to sort of be in the mindset for that. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's one that I am looking forward to, you know, like spending an after a couple afternoons with to just uh, relax with at some point. Cool. I have heard of it. Sounds cool, though. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another one, I can't remember mention this, is a Hard Space Shipbreaker. Mm -hmm. So this is a game about um, cutting up spaceships. <laughs> so you can think of it sort of as uh, one of these simulation games, uh, kind of like maybe... Um, uh, viscera cleanup detail or something like that uh, except in this case you are like uh, someone who's uh, signed up with a salvage company you have you know a billion dollars in debt that you need to pay off by salvaging spaceships uh, so you start to you know get these certifications over time to use more advanced tools um, you know it's a zero g environment so you're just sort of floating around uh, you know, you cut bits off, you use your, you know, your laser tether tractor beam to chuck in things around. Uh, you could injure yourself badly. Um, so it's it's interesting. Uh, the controls are not quite as uh, straightforward as Viscera clean up the tail right out the gate. Uh, but it there's also a lot more depth to it. I mean, Viscera clean up the tail is more of an activity than a game, I'd say. Yeah. No, for like this... podcasting, I guess, or yeah. listening to podcasts while you play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I can see this one being uh, pretty satisfying to get into. So again, I only uh, sunk a couple hours into it so far. Alrighty, that's probably enough from me on that. Because I have one news story I meant to talk about. Or my oh, segment, yeah. or my time. Okay, uh, Clone Eyes coming back. Did you hear about this, Alan? Oh, oh yeah, I saw you <laughs> mentioning in Discord. Yeah. Uh, so, this, sorry, is, this, this is a Bill Lawrence. This is uh, this is a in 2002. This is a one, look up it down. This was a one season uh, MTV cartoon that came out called Clone High, and the whole premise was that uh, well, the song says it all. Way way back in the 1980s, secret government employees dug up famous guys and ladies and made amusing genetic copies. So they're all in high school now. So it's like Abe, Abraham Lincoln, Cleo, Cleopatra, JFK. Like, they're all there, and they all kind of you know, serve their purpose. Like Abe is the awkward, but still likable kind of main character. Mm -hmm. Not super popular. JFK is kind of like the playboy. Cleopatra is, you know, the hot girl that you know, <laughs> Abe wants to get with, but JFK is with her right now. Gandhi is kind of like the nerdy friend. And then Jonah Arc's like kind of the goth girl that has a crush on Abe. And that's kind of the main the crew. <laughs> uh, this is by the, um, 
I guess it's, it's uh, who are the creators? It's Bill Lawrence. Uh, it's like Bill Lawrence did Scrubs, right? That's one of his right, big yeah. things. Okay, yeah. He, but there was other people who created he Scrubs. Did, was, um, uh, what was the other thing he did with uh, Christopher Miller and Phil Lord? And yeah, Bill Lawrence are the ones that created it. And they're all back right. for the new. Yeah, but they also did, they did um, like Cougar Town, I think. And also right. um, Cougar Town, Scrubs, the one I can't Spin think of. Spin City, maybe? Spin I'm City. Of? That was it. I couldn't yeah, think of yeah. that one. Um, yeah, so they, they did that one as well, um, and, and something before. So, I mean, he's noted for a number of TV shows. Obviously, for me, Scrubs, right? So, yeah, well, yeah, Scrubs is amazing. But, yeah. um, but for me, like, like, Clone High was this one season, 13 episodes. It, it didn't even get a release, DVD release, outside of Canada, or whatever that's <laughs> worth. Uh, apparently, like, people were in India were very mad about the portrayal of Gandhi. They didn't really understand it was a clone of Gandhi, and I guess MTV... The protest caused MTV to cancel it. I don't know. <laughs> that seems a little, little, little uh, harsh, but I don't know. <laughs> a little drastic, but well, I uh, have the uh, DVD because you suggested it. I think, yeah, Bryce. And so. uh, 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 TV's Kyle loves it too. I right, he was yeah. a big fan as yeah, well. Kyle so um, it yeah, it's cool. It's coming back. They got the original creators on board. Um, it was a weird era because, like, I was big. Like, I was in high school at that time, and you know, I was very into that eras of emo and screamo music, and that that. Uh, that soundtrack evokes a lot of those great bands that I love back then. So I was into it. Also, like it did a good job of like making fun of like a lot of teen dramas at the time, like Dawson's Creek and Beverly Hills 90210. Like they had like every episode started out with like tonight on a very special clone high. And it was like every episode was a special episode. And the final episode took place in this big dance that um but it wasn't like a dance of importance. It was like the mid semester harvest dance or something. it wasn't even like a dance that mattered but it, that's where everything went down because hey it's like a teen drama uh but it's, it's very funny i would have always loved to have seen another season of it at the time because you know i you know most shows take a season or two to get you know comedy shows to find their groove um so yeah yeah bring it back why not the time is now <laughs> it's been 18 years <laughs> yeah um Okay, cool. Well, I will be interesting to see where the surface is. If it surfaces on Hulu, I won't be able to see it. Uh, MTV Studios apparently is behind it as well. Oh, so really? Well. Okay, interesting. I don't know. Do they? Their stuff? I, don't, I don't know. I'm so out of out of uh, touch with MTV lately. I don't even know if they still produce music videos. Music I, videos are so late have, on it. We were, making, we were making that joke two like decades ago. I know, but I'm just saying <laughs> it's, it's probably still true. <laughs> you know. Who knows what what's on on uh, MTV now? Uh, I don't even know if it's still relevant, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I mean, yeah. You know, hey, it is for me now. If Clone High Two is going to be on it, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm all bored. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're lucky, it'll show up on Netflix or something like that. I will find a way to watch it. No question. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so I guess we're on to our topic. Sure. What's it called? No, I, yeah. no, I don't. I don't think so. I think we should stall a little longer. <laughs> I promised it was going to be not too long, not that it was going to be any good at all. <laughs> no, it was 33 it's fair. minutes. It's fair. And, and let me just start out with how much we love this. I will say that it was in Crunchyroll, the listing for this said episode one. And I am offended that there might be an episode two coming. There won't be. No. This is like, Crunchyroll does it anyway. Like, if you look at, like, the Naruto movie we watched that one oh, time, right. it's like, I think it's one. an episode one for that, too. Oh, okay. Like, I think it's the way they're just, they do their yeah. thing. But no, there shouldn't be a second episode of this because, oh, boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yona in the Solitary Fortress. Um, yeah. It's 33 minutes or something like that. It's on Crunchyroll. Um, this, is, this is terrible. I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch it. It's but, like yeah. I'll describe it. As, it's super, super bootleg Final Fantasy. Like the music, yeah. the look of it. Like it's yeah. all just like super. Like hey, we want to make Final Fantasy into a, a half hour episode, but we had no budget. We had no creative vision. <laughs> just hey, let's just try. So it. <laughs> I mean, it it looks like. So it, it seems like that this was an art student's project, but I would say this is more like a high school student's project. It's just. It's bad by all accounts. Look, most games, video games, have much better graphics. Um, And I don't mean to be vicious and terrible. It's just character is is kind of, they're like statues moving around. And those credits are pretty long. Like, this is not just some high schooler and, you know, just trying to, you know, because, hey, if this was was one guy, like, his sophomore, you know, 
movie project in right. college. Like, I'd be actually pretty impressed. They well, let off. me say like, this. No, it's the problem. It's not. They, they did a better job than I would have. <laughs> let me say that. However, the uh, – okay, so let's – what is the story? Let's start with that. Let's at least give it some fairness here. So what is the a story? A girl sulks and then kills her brother. Yeah. There you okay. go. Yeah. Um, she's she's in solitary what because she's isolated because she's got powers. Yeah. So so yeah. So so you know, a, a brother has been protecting his his younger sister. At least he calls her his sister. We assume that's the case. Uh, for quite a while, they're in a fortress somewhere, and people have been trying to kill him or kidnap him for a long time because she's different. She's not human. She has powers. Yeah. Powers to make creepy. Imps and goblin people. <laughs> well, I got what they're right. better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the noises that the these characters make is terrible. It's yeah, the terrible. second I, I felt bad the second I started this up. Okay, let's watch this. It's a quick topic for this week, and then like this the the girl laughing this annoying laugh. She's running, and I see the look at the characters. I'm like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> like, right. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, hey, we've the... come down this path. We have to do it. So. What would you think of the 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 uh, the flying? <laughs> furry goblin thing i didn't like him like most characters i didn't like him <laughs> <This is true. laughs> yeah the, and and, the... and but and however bad the animation is in this series i have to say that the real crimes come with this story such yeah. as it is i mean it just wobbles all over the place they're like the characters have no motivations from scene to scene. They keep introducing more characters, which isn't necessary. And they've got history and there's politics. Uh, and then there's some boy who shows up and he's an agent of the monarchy. Uh, and <laughs> the which he monarchy. repeats an awful lot, the monarchy, except maybe he isn't or something. Um, <laughs> and she's like, you should come with me, girl. And she's like, nah, ha. And so she like does some magic on him and then her, her brother tries to kill him. And she eventually decides that for some reason she doesn't want him killed. Uh, so she like uh, pushes her brother into a deep shaft and kills him. Are you sure he killed? I thought he survived. I remember thinking that for a second at the very end, like he got up and like, it, you know, it's possible, but we, we never saw him. I mean, we see her looking at his, uh, at, at the picture of, of, or a, a, a little recording of her saying, we'll be together forever to her brother. And like, she doesn't actually seem to feel any regret that he, she killed him off or whatever. I don't know. I, I think I remember the scene where he got up for a second. It was like a one thing where it's like, Oh, he's not really dead, but still like, I feel like even if that were the case, I mean, it's still she, pretty for, cold. Yeah, for her like perspective, she killed him. Like <laughs> he survived the fall. Like you don't see that and like, expect him to live. So. Yeah, I mean, he devoted her his life to protecting her, and she's like, yeah, enough of that. Yeah, and, um, yeah, but there's no like motivations or justifications, and she doesn't even want to go off with you know this snarky cool dude. Uh, he's like, I'm going off to other planets. You want to come? And she's like, nah. <laughs> also, like when the brother is falling to his potential death he like decides to throw a lightning bolt up and like i guess kill everybody in the tower including his sister like it's like this weird like you're yeah. like the reason why the whole tower started collapsing is because he threw a lightning bolt as he was falling to like mess up the mechanisms of the tower and that's why it became this big like rush to get to the top of the tower to get on that ship and she uses her magic to make stairs and her magic stops working for no particular reason because the magic <laughs> has no rules in this in this story Maybe they thought this was going to be some, like, pilot for a series, but, oh, boy. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it, yeah. Well, so, the other thing we didn't really talk about is this is all, like, 3D CG. So, yeah, bad. There's, yeah, so I think yeah. that's the one thing like, that we're all, we're all, up, I mean, thank God Matt didn't see this. I, we <laughs> would never hear the end of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's not a big fan of 3D CG. This is all 3D CG. That's why I made the comment about video games have better graphics. Um, it's, but this is not like it's not like CG 3D within like they're not trying to like create an anime look. Like, this is like CG CG. Like you're not trying to pretend right. this is like you know yeah. a 2D thing. Yeah. Um, or hand drawn thing, and it just looks bad. <laughs> it's just look it's bad. It's animated clunky. Um, the music I only kind of noticed music like once. It's it bootleg like Final Fantasy music. That's what yeah, it is. It was just, everything was very bad about it. Animation's terrible. Uh, the modeling is bad. Um, 
I, I feel w- like they tried to like they, like things happen because they were like let's show off our pedal tech as <laughs> like I, particle effects I, like because that for that reason it, the line she created turned into a bunch of pedals like check it out isn't this cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pedals floating <laughs> all different physics <laughs> yeah I, I I really hope there wasn't a team of people that made this uh, the credits were not small <laughs> I mean, that's the thing like, I was like it's right. like it was a lot of people worked on this but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and oh. maybe, maybe it was a college project or something. Um, I don't know. It just, uh, it was just very not good. <laughs> but you look like, what are, what are other, like, you know, small team efforts in the, like, sort of half an hour space? I would say, watch, this is a Voices of a Distant Star first. Right. <laughs> oh, right. man. Right. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's like, it's not impossible to create something cool that is mm-hmm. not made by a huge team. It's short, but still very well, enjoyable. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, okay, so I was listening to Polymatic today because I couldn't remember what John and I talked about a month ago. Um, and I I had a short of a week or something um, that was really good. Uh, and it was a short. And maybe there's like maybe half a dozen people on it. And it was animated. Okay, it wasn't necessarily anime. But the, the point is size of the team can matter. Um, I mean, you know, if you, you design by committee, you won't necessarily get a, a good product all the time, um, which is notably why when a big company does something well, um, that's that's impressive. But um, the point is that, yeah, okay, so size of group or team doesn't necessarily make a product better or worse. But um, in this case, I've seen shorts that are maybe 20 minutes long that are really well animated and mm-hmm. are, are coming clearly out of a college project um, or student film or something, and they're just amazing. And this is... This has none of those qualities, not even the slightest. Well, if you look at you know uh, hands off Azokem, yeah, uh, from from last season, <laughs> it's about that, yeah. you know a small team making an anime because they really want to, and you know they want to like affect people and touch people, and you know that's so much about the process of doing it, and in this one. You know, it's just, let's take some off-the-shelf stuff and slap it together. I mean, the story felt like it could be something from Azoken. You know, it's just like these random scenes sort of stitched together. But there's no real, like, looking into the effect of what they're putting up on the screen. You know, it's just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it made me wonder how this ended up on Crunchyroll. Like, what <laughs> what yeah. deal was made where they're like, yeah, sure, put it up on there. We'll we'll sign this deal. <laughs> like, I just don't know like how that happens. <laughs> this one episode thing. Maybe it came along as like a package with something else more popular. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's from 2006. Yeah, um, it's really old. When did Crunchyroll start? Like, that can't be that much later than when Crunchyroll was founded. I don't even know. Like, that's 2006 is pretty old. <laughs> Or maybe um, they like so, load it up afterwards, but yeah. Okay, cool. okay. And here's, I mean, you mentioned, um, you know, Distant Star. Uh, this is from uh, Comics Wave Films, and they've actually done Makoto Shinkai stuff. So, mm. like, they should know better. Yeah, <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. So check it out. It's really, it's not bad. Everyone check it out. You should just go check it out. Yeah. I'm joking. Don't check it. Out. Save yourself three. <laughs> no, no. Months. We 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 did this so you do not have to. This mm-hmm. is one of these times where we have, you know, thrown ourselves inside of this badly in front of this badly animated bus. So you are not struck by it. So you know, accept our sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's, there's nothing nothing good about this. No, you, yeah. you, there is nothing good to say. Nothing. I mean, that we. Well, I guess we could say we've watched worse things. Sure. Uh, Usually a single episodes of Let's Worst Let's be honest, things. have we? Okay, so DLE stuff, right? All the things yeah. that you... Yeah. you I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Forest Fairy yeah. 5 or whatever that one was. Whatever. That comes to mind as being worse yeah. than this, but yeah. <laughs> not a yeah. lot. Okay, so uh, let's just let's just cut ourselves <laughs> off on this topic because there's nothing great about it, but I will give you three links uh, for everyone who might be interested uh, first one goes to Crunchyroll, the wiki, and ANN, kind of the usual style of things. Uh, OGLink.com slash 51E, 51F, and 51G. If you feel it's necessary to watch this thing, I I would highly not recommend it. Even if you like it, terrible things and like to laugh at them, you will not even get a chance to laugh at this. There's just there's not, no, no good value in this. 
I feel like I called a bootleg Final Fantasy. I, that's a sick burn on Final Fantasy. <laughs> even saying that, like, yeah, that's like, unfair. It's to so Final bootleg. Like, don't even like. Don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then uh, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up because uh, the fireworks again. Even though it's Sunday, right now are probably going to start soon and uh, I don't want them on the recording. So with that said, uh, for all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net or yogenetworks.tv. Uh, yeah, I am, I am just saying this ending like I'm on autopilot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a number of ways you can reach out. You can email us at uh, talking at gmail.com. It's always been our email. Um, what are we going to do next week? Good question. Uh, we have a pretty good idea. I'm sure you could probably guess by now, but more shows have to be released. Uh, but you'll find out on Wednesday because that's, that's when we podcast. Uh, for feedback, you can always hang out with us in Discord and also leave feedback. OGLink.com slash feedback. Um, also, OGLink.com slash Discord if you just want to come in and hang out in Discord and talk to us. Um, and I guess guess that's it. Oh, I got it. Okay, I guess I got a fortune. Okay, let, hopefully this is a good one. All right. Oh, good. This is not super long. I was just trying to process this in my brain. All right. You will hear pleasant news. That's wow, it. that's actually a fortune. Not a great one, but that is a fortune. Yeah. I think it's been a, it's been months since I've been able to say that. So Yeah, and I did. I heard recently pleasant news, but ha. this fortune is late. <laughs> So, yeah. so with that said, that is your fortune for the week, everyone. I hope you do hear pleasant news. Uh I I yeah, I don't know. Uh yeah, I'm thinking of something I'm not gonna say it. So anyhow, everyone have a good week. You know, please as usual be safe, stay home, and stay healthy. Until next week, have a good one. Bye.